We're out here again at the Tree Fort, this time working on your CD. Yeah. And so maybe you can tell me a little bit about, um, first of all, how you got the idea to get started on this project. Uh, well, it was when I was here uh, working on the old 97s record. Um, I'd, I'd sort of been playing with uh, this great band, one of the two great bands I have, uh, they're called the Dufalos, based around John Dufalo from Death Row Davies fame, and Jason Garner, who's also in Death Row Davies, and uh, Joe Reyes from Buttercup, and, and Richard Martin, and um, I, I thought that it'd be wonderful for us to come out here and spend a few days and, and do some recording, and then uh, s sort of told the guys to put some dates, uh, uh, set them aside, and then I went into like two months of agonizing over whether it was the right thing to do because I've been battling tendonitis in my left wrist for seven months and um, also have had my head in, you know, in the old 97s record and all these other things and had tons of songs but a lot of unfinished songs and uh, not a whole lot of time to, to think at all about my own music. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, up until the very end, I was going back and forth, and then about a week ago, I had a heart-to-heart -heart with my wife, and she really encouraged me to go for it, and uh, so here we are. I met Salim, let me think about this, a long time ago. He had a band called the Moon Festival. I was in a band called 13, and lived in San Antonio, and uh, we became friends with them. They'd come down and play shows with us. We'd come up and play um, Trees and Clearview and all those places. Uh, gosh, I can't even think of how long ago. A, a while back. So when I moved to Dallas, which was the end of 97, um, he was one of like three people I knew in town, something like that. Um, and we became friends, started recording together pretty early on, or at least kind of like playing each other our recordings we were making and what we were working on and then that led to us um, recording together in his back corner of his little garage which has now turned into this amazing studio but it was just uh, yeah just a little recorder in the corner and a few instruments and we we'd, uh, figured things out as best as we could at the time so it's been a while so we've been playing together for a while um, I uh, played on most all of his records, not his last one with Billy Harvey, but most of the others, and uh, just helped him out whenever I could, so luckily timing was good with this whole recording. So. The first song we did is called Channel 5, and it's my ongoing, I've, now I've got a trilogy uh, that started with 1978, the song 1978, and Western Hills was sort of like the, the, uh, the second part of that, and now I think Channel 5 is the final final piece it's like Lord of the Rings I guess <laughs> and uh, it's, it's is it another, about your childhood it, it's not it's it's not as autobiographical uh, as the first two it's a different it's a, uh, it is a it's about a relationship um, with an, another kid uh, who who really liked to dance and I I've always had an odd uh, unholy uh, marriage with dancing or things of that nature so uh, the song sort of starts out with you know I wasn't born a, dan uh, a dancer because the, uh, the danger was too much and then it goes from there but it's it's it, it, it's a song sort of that deals with childhood a little bit but somehow it seems related to those songs those two songs yeah that's the thing about like this entire project and you know the the fact that we all get a chance to work together now is that I've known for a long time that John and Jason were really nice guys and uh, you know just to meet Salim and realize well like he's one one of them too you know he's really really sweet and and giving and um, <clears throat> and kind of speaks in the same language that we all do or um, well just kind of understand like the song is kind of the most important thing and and that it kind of tells you what to do so that nobody really ever has a conflict with someone telling them, oh, you know, instead of this, you could try this, or, you know, like we jettison ideas real fast to come up with what we think is like the best thing. What, the, nobody knows the songs. So like Travolta, for example, it's less than a week old, it, so it's sort of like a sketch. 
and so we start learning the song I've got these words and as I as I'm singing them I start changing them because you get to hear how they sing or you don't like them or oh, that's not it. and I also like the feeling of if I'm wincing when I'm singing something or thinking I'm a little embarrassed or what are the guys going to think about that or then it's got to go so as we as the band is learning the song and we're, we're sorting out the song structure and people are learning their parts I'm I'm also changing the words and sometimes the melodies and um, so it's it's uh, it's kind of exhilarating. It's fun at this point in in my life. It's nice to, to just learn a song. We don't know any of these songs ahead. Uh, it's nice to learn a song and just jump right in and not have a whole lot of time to question, is this the way to go for this one? Uh, and we, we do that, you know, we'll try a few things. Um, ultimately, it's up to Slane. It's his record, so he's got final kind of say. Uh, but... Well. One that we just did uh, is called uh, 38 Rue de Sevigny, which is actually was written in Paris when uh, w uh, me and my family were there last year touring. And uh, Gavin has a great video on Facebook that I hi highly recommend uh, to anybody who hasn't seen it. But he actually was filming um, the at the moment that I, I was writing this song. And uh, it's a really funny, evocative uh, film. It might end up being the video for the song that we're working on now. But So I've been sitting on this song for over a year, waiting to record it. And I, I always had the feeling that I wanted to do it with the band. And it's been a trip to, to finally hear it kind of coming, you know, to life. Not just being kind of this sketch that I've had. As you start to meet other artists and other like-minded people, that's exactly what happens. You end up with like a collective of people that just kind of become your little laboratory for like kind of figuring out how the world works. And that's exactly what happened to me and John and Jason and, and Salim. And, and I'm really, really happy that uh, we're finally getting a chance to, to record together, actually, because, you know, we've performed and every time we played together, I was just like, God, man, this feels good. I could just do nothing but look and smile, you know, at John and Jason and Salim, just like, wow. Awesome. Almost every time with the Death Ray Davies that, that we ever toured, just about every single time, every band we went on the road with, by some point, whether it was halfway through the trip or whatever, we would be on the stage with each other's bands playing and kind of involved in the whole thing and it would become a, you know, a third thing. And, other, and it's kind of hard not to want to do that with music and musicians you like. And, and so it's always kind of flattering when you meet other people that feel the same way and want to learn your song. So you did an interesting thing to help fund this project. Yeah. Uh, you used that Pledge Music website mm -hmm. and you got the support of fans. How did you come up with the idea to do that? Uh, well, it wasn't it's so much my idea as, as my friend Alex Deason, who's in a great band called The Damn Wells. He, uh, he came to Dallas uh, in November of last year and uh, his band was in the middle of doing that, and this is the first that I'd ever heard of it. And I thought it was um, a great, a great idea, a great thing, and and ingenious. And uh, so uh, shortly thereafter, I you know I signed up with Pledge Music. Benji through Alex actually, without Alex's help, um, may not have gotten that you know relationship started. And um, it was wonderful. We raised. Uh, money at the time I thought that um, I would just take a month off and do it in my studio and um, when the old 97s record came along and all this other stuff I sort of like the one thing I've really learned uh, more than ever this year is to you know adapt and, and you know I've got to change plans and the big thing is I realized uh, uh, doing that was not going to be the way to make this record so uh, and I, I also have plans to do recording with Billy as well Billy Harvey who produced my last record Constellation he's in California now and I think we're going to do some transcontinental recording I really would like to have it done by the end of the year um, for a hope, hopefully uh, you know 2011 release and hopefully again on Tepeda we haven't talked about it at all but um, 
the, the German label that I put out my last three records. I'm hoping they'll be blown away and want to release it. And and then, uh, you know, while all this is happening, I'll hopefully be working on songs with Billy and, and uh, have another record ready to go. Maybe I'll release two records next year, like the old 97. <laughs>